click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will talk about distributed transactions that means the local and the global transactions and how the transaction manager and coordinator perform these transactions and finally what are the failure modes on the transactions. Now the distributed transactions are the transactions that are located in different part of this processor and they can compute and execute parallelly. That means now one transaction with another transactions, they are performing parallelly and also we need to implement the client and server side architecture. That means while being the client is initiating some transaction, maybe it required to go into the server side so that it can be generally implemented in that way that the transaction need to be performed at the server side and then get back result back to the server side. Now what happens that the client will initiating a transaction, it has a local transaction state. So the client initiates a local transactions while the server, when it gets these transactions, it becomes a global transactions. Now at the server side, we had this global transactions. So whenever the client or any of the machine updates on a local database, that database transactions become the local transactions. And when we have it across the network, then it becomes the global transaction. Now to ensure the properties of an acid, that means the atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability, we need all the global transactions and the local transactions are need to be restricted in some way. So that we can have the global transactions are given always the preferences than the local transactions. Now the global transactions, if it is having an exclusive lock on a particular data item, then on the shared or the local transactions cannot access the database until and unless the server or the global transaction releases this item. Now the vice versa is also true that when there is an exclusive lock on the local transactions, then the global transactions may preempt the data. Then when the exclusive lock is made on the shared data, that is a local data, and then it is moving through the network. So now this X lock queue can be unlocked by this global transaction so that it can again put an exclusive lock in a global mode. So other than being in the global mode, the exclusive lock and this exclusive lock of a local one could be in a deadlock situation where the global transaction or the server side is waiting for the local client data to release the data item. And again, the local a database updation on the transaction needs the server to perform some update on the data so that it can continue with the transaction. So to avoid this one, we get the preemption nature in the global transaction so that it can access the data in such a way that it can achieve the exclusive lock unlocked by a local database and get its exclusive lock for the global mode. Now as we are dealing with both the global and local transactions by a site, see suppose for the client, a transaction is local when it is updating the local database. Also it can have some global transaction when it tries to update some database that is stored in some distributed or remote machine. Now there are two type of system that we can follow. One is a transaction manager, another is a transaction coordinator. So what does a transaction manager do? It just does this exclusive lock unlock and exclusive lock and unlock of global and local both. So this is the task of a transaction manager that it manages that which of the transactions are in a global mode and which is in a local mode to decide that which to give in priority and which to give in waiting order. Now the transaction coordinator mainly coordinates among the local transactions inside a machine. Now let us define the role of transaction manager and the transaction coordinator using a diagram. Say suppose that we are having two machine and on these two machines we have one transaction manager and one transaction coordinator for each. Now the role of the transactions manager can be defined as that for each of the machine it maintains the log recovery or the log record for each of the transactions being in a global and a local. 
and now as we are dealing with a global transaction then the transaction manager also keeps track of the concurrency control scheme so that it can be happen all the global transactions with other machines in an concurrently controlled way so if these are the other computers that are dealing inside the system with the machine and machine two in particular concern then they can be connected to each other by say the transaction coordinator is only dealing with the transactions inside a local machine that means the transaction coordinator should be connected to the other transaction managers so that the other computers transaction manager can keep track of what the transaction coordinator is performing on this particular machine so the transaction coordinator one of machine one needs to connects with the other one so now the TC1 is connected to TM2 in such a way that TM2 can get access of all the transactions from the transaction coordinator of TM1. That means the TM1 can manage that what are the concurrency control scheme it can apply to the machine 1 to connect with machine 2. Same as for the other machines in this system. Now the transaction manager of a machine 1 is the connection to the transaction coordinator to the other one. So each transaction manager can happen at the connection which is getting to many of the transaction coordinator. But one transaction coordinator of a system can get its connection to many of the transaction manager. So the relation between this TC to TM is 1 is to N. So now it goes with the TC2 to connect with the TM1 and with other computers. So this is the basic structure of a distributed transactions. Now that is the task of a transaction manager that we have defined that maintaining the log record and maintaining the concurrency control scheme. Then what is the function of a transaction coordinator? That to information propagate to the other transaction manager that my transaction has been started. Say suppose that in machine 1 we have a set of transaction TI to TN. So the transaction control manager or the coordinator is taking care of the transaction that it is started. Next it goes among the ordering on the transaction that is the subtracting of each of this transaction operation and dividing it into the processors. That means the machine one is related with if more than one processor then it divides one transaction and its operation between the processors. And finally the last task of this coordinator is that it can take care of terminating the proper transaction so that it can start the next transaction in the sequence or even it in a parallel execution when one transaction is completing so that the other transactions can get the item unlocked from it data item. Now the main concern of this transaction that is of a distributed nature is the failure modes. So there can be a lots of failure modes that is associated with the transaction. The first type of failure is in loss of message. So now that the global and local both the transactions are happening, so we can have that a local database that is accessed by a local machine. Now when the local database become a global one to the remote site and now while transferring the data in the network problem there may be a loss of message which can go with an inconsistent and undurable result. The next one is a failure of a site. That means the site which is serving to then access to the database is being filled. Say suppose that TC2 is connecting to TM1 but TM1 is not available because the site machine 1 has been filled. So there is a problem in the transaction that TC1 is controlling. Now the next type is a failure of the network. That means which network is connecting these two has have a failure and there is no connection between these two. So there can be no global transactions that can exist. And the final is a network partition. Now if we partition the network in such a way so that it can connect at least one, two or more than two connecting machines, then the partition itself becomes a barrier because the now transaction can happen through one network partition, but it can happen that the other network has been failed, complete transaction that has been committed properly. So these are the failure issues that we face in the distributed transaction. 
So now if we can partition our transactions inside a local machine in such a way that it can be go with every processor that is attached with the machine. So now it can be achieved with the partitions very smoothly and reliably. So that is all for a distributed transaction. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.